I'm here just to make sure that you are all reassured that yes, there are female faculty <laughs> at Stanford. <laughs> I want to recall something that Martin said this morning. He made something of a joke of, uh, about an economist, and, and some of my best friends are economists, as you can see here, um, that many economists study education, but they have no real understanding of how education works. They think they know how education works because they went to school. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they can make good interpretations out of the kinds of numbers that they crunch. I think the same thing could be said about sociologists, about political scientists, about psychologists, about people from the many disciplines who are represented uh, at Stanford and in other places who study education. I'm trained as a psychologist, and I'm totally amazed sometimes at how some of my extremely prominent colleagues in psychology come up with really inappropriate and impossible solutions to education problems. In an, an experimental situation, it might work, but in a real school, in a real classroom with real teachers and children, my experience suggests that it's not something that is appropriate or meaningful. The reason that they don't know that is that they haven't spent time with people or connected to schools the way my colleagues have. One of the, thing, one of the qualities of the faculty at Stanford is that they are, whether they're economists or sociologists or psychologists, they are in some way deeply connected to the real world. Either themselves, they are in classrooms, they are in schools, they are meeting with teachers, they are engaged with teachers unions in conversations, not just studying uh, them. Um, and they have colleagues who are doing work that's very different from theirs, but who they talk to, interact with, with and for whom their students often make connections. So it's very difficult to be a faculty member or a student at Stanford, whatever you are studying, and not learn something about how children learn, effective pedagogy, how schools need to be organized to support effective teaching, school finance, and the different ways in which it can support or undermine equity. Uh, I could go on with a long list of issues, but you cannot be at Stanford without being exposed to uh, and having some understanding of a breadth of educational issues that may be at the side of your own personal passion and what you want to study. What, what I love about being in a school of education is that I can practice my discipline, which is psychology, but in a context in which I'm learning about how other disciplines can help me understand some of the same phenomenon that I'm interested in knowing about. And when we want to solve problems in society, one of the things we all know, problems don't come in little disciplinary packages. Um, they, they're, they're multidisciplinary. So if we want to, let's say, improve teaching, we need to understand the sociology, we need to understand the ec economics, we need to understand um, just a whole variety of issues to be able to do something that's very specific like improved teaching. I could take any problem and I think we'd all find that it takes many disciplines, many different points of view, many different kinds of strategies uh, for understanding and learning to be able to really make sense of them and to make a difference. I think that the multidisciplinary character and the deep connections to the practice of education that Stanford offers is, is uh, really, I don't want to say it's unique, but yeah, it's pretty unusual. You, you don't find that very often. I, I do want to mention that there's a broad array of work that goes on at Stanford that is not necessarily represented in the talks that you've been hearing today. There are three broad areas. There is an area called, um, actually we changed the name, developmental DAPS. It's mostly, it's psychologists basically who are using the tools and the discipline of psychology to try to understand issues such as how students learn, um, 
how different types of pedagogies, how different types of technologies affect how students learn. It all, the folks there also look at social emotional development and how that um, either interferes with or supports learning in, uh, in school. A lot of work that goes on uh, using technology. In our uh, an, a second program, people focus primarily on teaching teachers um, and effective teaching. And then in the third program, which is kind of everything else, is are people who use other kinds of social sciences, sociology, political science, economics, and so anthropology to understand various problems of education. These four are very special. And there's not, it, it's by no accident that they happen to be here and be represented and are centrally important to the, the Lemon Center. Um, they have experience in Brazil. They speak Portuguese, which I cannot say I do. Although I'm picking up a few words. When I try to speak Spanish, it comes out as French, so it's really a distance. Uh, uh, so, um, so they clearly are critical members of the, the center. But there are many faculty at Stanford who have a great deal of experience working in foreign countries who are deeply interested, passionately interested, in some of the challenges and the issues that Brazil faces and who, can, who I think have the potential of being um, attracted to being involved in helping students address some of the important questions in Brazil that need to be addressed. And I'm going to stop there and pass the mic on to uh, whoever goes next.